Hello and welcome to the uh, product launch for Kepler's uh, latest offering. Um, this is where we are welcoming uh, research and news into the uh, Kepler terminal. Um, thanks for joining us uh, today. Um, I'll be running through a couple of things um, just uh, before we get going. And that's to highlight that the launch today isn't just the launch of um, an addition to our platform it's and, and the infrastructure that we've built out the the, the launch today is really around um, how we are now have uh, research as a, as an offering for Kepler um, covering all of the commodities that our ex kind of current client base uh, know us for use us for on a daily basis <clears throat> um, alongside all of the content uh, that we are going to be offering as part of this service. Um, we're really pleased with what we've put together in terms of the, the kind of the distribution mechanism and how people can, can gain access to all of this content. We really wanted to move away from the kind of the old um, just sending out emails processes, kind of very hard to interact uh, with the, the research and the data that we're looking at and the data that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So We'll get going um, by actually just looking at what is uh, the Kepler Research and News Terminal. Um, this is available on uh, all of your platforms, whether you're looking at LNG, liquids, dry bulks. It's there um, as of yesterday, in fact. So we essentially have two different variants, and this depends on whether you're looking at LNG or whether you're looking at other commodities. So as I say, we're releasing not only research, but we're also embedding the news offering that we released a month or so ago, um, whereby we're still currently only covering LNG. So what you see here in front of you is the LNG terminal. And because we have LNG news, you're seeing both this combination um, of, of products. I'll just cut across to say the liquids platform, where you can see that we've just removed the news elements here. So for today, I'm going to stay within uh, the, the LNG platform. It's where you can see all of the content that we have to offer and just basically run you through how you can use the terminal um, as it stands today. And then also some developments that we're going to be planning on in the kind of near term before this, the end of this year and then through into next year as well. So this is now your homepage um, when you log into the terminal as well. You have access via the menu bar on the left hand side and then you still have all of the the usual features with say the access to the map access to the flows metrics the flows analytics and so on all down the left hand side um, if we start with the home page that you see here now this is where we bring together all of the different types of content that we're producing across research and news so the latest will show either the the top three research updates or the top three research updates and news articles here you can see uh, there is a news publication that's the most recently published, but then otherwise this morning um, there was a publication from the research team, say the Indian um, crude oil and clean products markets. Uh, yesterday uh, there was uh, the, the last news update from, uh, from the news desk around the uh, big LNG contract signed by Sinopec. If we look further down the page, uh, on the left hand uh, left hand side, you'll see essentially the news stream. This is all uh, LNG related. In the middle, you have all of the research updates. So again, this is cross commodity. Um, at this point in time, you'll be seeing everything that we're publishing um, across all of the commodity space. Uh, these are the most recent articles here. On the right hand side, you have some of the more longer format report pieces, and we'll dig into what those particularly entail um, in, in due course. And then if we keep on scrolling down the bottom, you'll see that we have all of our webinar content as well. Um, just how we're navigating around. Up at the top, you can see, okay, we're on the home page at the moment. You can drill down into the, uh, the news page, which is, as I say, just on LNG at this point in time. Um, if we cut across, you can see uh, all of the, uh, the research updates that are coming from, uh, from my team. Similarly, all of the reports, these are the longer format articles. And again, we'll, say we'll, we'll get into this in more detail down the line um, is via here. And then the webinars. Um, and we've uploaded all of our content 
um, produced since back in March of last year, including the one, uh, the, the last webinar that we produced um, just last week, looking at, say, the LNG market. Um, I'll go back to the homepage and just show you again, uh, show you in a bit more detail how you can navigate around this. So you'll see here as well, we have all of the uh, commodity tags. So we've gone through and we've added uh, kind of um, tags at the commodity level, a geography level, and then also at a thematic level um, for all of the content that we've produced. At this point in time, the filtering process only enables you to look at, uh, to drill down by the commodity, but um, within the next few months, we'll be enhancing this functionality and we'll be enabling filtering via um, combinations of commodity, geography, and then as I say, thematic tags as well. So things like, is it a geopolitical story? Is it something that's covering demand? Is it about OPEC plus, for example? So if we start here, we're on LNG, so let's filter down here to start off with. You'll see a lot of these have changed. Now, basically, we filter down across all of the content types on the homepage. So obviously, all of the news stays the same. We've changed what the latest articles are up, uh, up in the top section. All of the research updates, they then filter back down, filter down to um, LNG related only content. And you would have seen, we've tagged all of the reports as well. So if there's a, um, a long format update, that will appear in here and that will be filtered down. Similarly, the same applies to the webinars. So any filter that you look at on this page um, is going to apply. If I do the same for research updates, I was looking at LNG there. Maybe I want to say, right, what have we produced on dry bulks? You'll see just how quickly that filters down into all of the um, shorter format market update type pieces um, that we've produced. Um, and all of the content that we've uploaded goes back to January of last year. I think we're up to uh, 450 different articles and reports across just the research content. And that's, that's not, not what's counting as being produced on a daily basis from the new side of things as well. So you can see these were the, uh, the commodity tags apply kind of wherever you're looking at them within this section. Just go back to the home page and we can run through some of the functionality as well. So what we kind of really want to emphasize, and this is part of um, not just how you're seeing the platform, how you're interacting with our um, the, uh, the, the analysis and the research that we're producing here, but also it's a key element of where we feel that we have a kind of a, a key strength as our business is that we sit on top of our data. So we're working with Kepler's proprietary data um, in all of the content that we produce. Obviously we're looking at information data from other sources, but the bottom line is that we are using our own data on a day-to-day -day basis and very closely connected with it. So if we um, drill down into, uh, into an article, say, so here I'm looking at a bit more of a macroeconomic piece. Um, you can see here, um, just running through some of the details that you'll get within the, the actual research update pages. Um, you can see the research type, so or the content type, sorry, so it's a research update. You'll get a guide as to how long it takes to read, you'll see when it's published. You'll be able to, you can see who's, um, who's actually authored the content as well. Um, that's a change that we've had previously. We've, um, we have actually gone through and kind of tried to retag all of the ownership of, of our historical contents as well. Um, so that going forward, pe forwards people will be able to actually kind of reach out directly to the analysts if they have any specific questions um, around, uh, around what we've, what we've uh, written about. And then you can see here, um, these are the tags that I was referring to. So this is uh, an article about the, uh, the global oil balances. So we've tagged it as crude, and then it's a fundamentally a supply and demand piece. But getting back to what I was saying about um, the connected nature of um, the work that we are producing, the research that we're producing, and our data, you can see here that we add in links to um, the, the data in the back end. So not only will you say be seeing charts that we're producing and that we're, we're actually including in these updates, 
but I'll just scroll back and you can see, well, here we're talking about OECD country crude oil inventories. I'll click on the link, give it a bit to catch up, and it will take you directly into our analytics page, into the inventories page, pre-populated with OECD crude oil inventories on a month ending basis. So we, that's something that we're kind of really keen to, uh, to to kind of to, to highlight how it's just so important the the ease with which you can move from the platform um, uh, into the research and then by reading into through the research we're linking directly back into the to the data that we're referring to. I'll cut into the um, up into the research updates just to show um, how we can uh, use the search function as well. So as I'm saying, so I was saying earlier we're adding functionality to the filtering process, but it's an incredibly quick and powerful search tool. So here, I'm just gonna search for um, OPEC Plus. You can see just how quickly it is to return any article um, that we, again, we've covered in the last couple of years, basically, um, that look at OPEC Plus. Um, you can see uh, that uh, the, the article that we were just looking at, the tightness in the global oil balances, because we're talking about OPEC plus within that article, um, that appears here. Um, if I want to uh, say, let's look at North Sea. Again, what have we done within North Sea? And I have an article here looking at um, expectations on North Sea uh, crude production, what's happening with Johannes Verdrup. And again, just to highlight, we have the link here talking about North Sea crude exports. We click on that link and it takes you directly into exports by grade um, that we've tracked over the last couple of years. So um, as well as the kind of the base um, report that you're reading here, you'll see also on the right hand side, um, we're linking into related articles as well. So this is talking about crude, it's talking about Northwest Europe through Norway and the UK. You can see we've tagged this here. It's tagged as North Sea, it's tagged as equity. So because we're met, uh, referencing um, the companies, kind of the likes of Equinor, BP Shell, et cetera, when we're, we're talking about the majors, we'll be kind of adding this equities thematic tag to them as well. And the system is basically saying, okay, right, what are the other articles um, that we can uh, connect into that are related about this? And so you can see it's talking about Johannes Verdrup, talking about Norway, talking about Norway, um, talking about Equinor. So it's this kind of direct connection into other um, research updates that we have produced through time that link into to the article that you're reading at that point in time as well. So we'll move across into um, what we call reports. So the, the longer format um, pieces as well. Um, these can range from, and I won't say standardized, but more regular updates. Um, I'm keen not to say standardized because we don't want to be producing um, content that is effectively pro forma, where each month you basically just have to update the text in a paragraph that refers to exactly the same subject as prior month. Um, in our mind, that's what our data is for. That's what the analytics tools are for in terms of building up our dashboards, building up the flows worksheets and so on. Um, if you want a quick overview of what's happened um, across a particular region and you're not interested in the, uh, partic the particularities of the why, what or the why, well then you can look at the chart for that. What we want to cover within our research is something that's actually very that's interesting to read and interesting to look into on a month to month basis. That's still going to be focused on the same areas such as um, the macroeconomic situation or um, countries within, within OPEC plus, but we just don't want to produce something that's this pro forma by rote um, solution. But if we have a look at what our longer format um, reports look like, it's essentially anywhere that we have kind of uh, lots of different sections, different topics, maybe we're covering different countries, but within the same kind of framework. And so using this as an example, this is our cross commodity report back from um, earlier on this year, where we're looking at India and Southeast Asia. 
You could, if you wanted, just look through. You can see all the contents here. You'll see how they're links, and I'll come back to that. You could just scroll through. You've got the executive summary down through to the introduction, and you can just keep on scrolling. Um, I'll just click back up to the top here. Alternatively, you might look at the introduction the, in the contents and think, actually, I'd quite like to look specifically at what's happening um, in Indonesia. So I'll actually click down and I can see here, OK, I'm going to have a look, read at, uh, read what, uh, what the research has to say about Indonesia and then scroll on through, get to the bottom of that section um, and then say, right, OK, I'm not just going to carry on. Let's just take me back up to the top. I'll see what's back in. Um, I'll see what's back in the contents page and go from there. Um, in the same way, as you can see, we've tagged um, the, the reports with the relevant geographies and the relevant um, kind of metadata. Um, and so that ties back in as well to um, other related contents as well. So the last research content type that we'll, uh, that we'll look at is our webinars. Now, so saying these have all been uploaded from back in March of last year. You can play them. I'm not going to click it here because it probably does all manner of dreadful things in terms of sound coming out of everything. But you can play it within this window. Alternatively, you can drill down. You can view it in the, in the window here. Um, we will be adding quite a useful feature um, in, the, uh, in the not too distant future, which is looking at um, downloading the slides for every webinar as well. So you will be able to access both the recording and the slide deck, PDF of the slide deck, um, from within the terminal. So before I move on kind of away from, uh, away from the, the actual the research and use terminal itself, I'll just kind of recap um, on the news side. So this is something that we released, released a couple of weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, now it's, it's just fully embedded within this broader research and news offering. There's one thing I should do because I uh, don't want to kind of miss highlighting it. Um, we also now, you'll see here, we have like an alert um, bell a notification uh, button with an orange alert. If I click on this here, you'll see um, this, uh, any updates that are published onto the research and news terminal will appear um, via uh, this notification window as well. So I was saying how we're moving away from um, emailing updates and emailing out alerts. For now, we have in-app notifications um, for all of our content types. Um, what we, and if I just click this, you can see it takes you into this, um, this story about um, Angola LNG. Um, what we are developing is the ability for our users to actually customize any email alerts they want um, themselves. So you'll be able to choose whether you receive an, an update via email um, immediately once uh, some content is published, or maybe at the end of the day as a daily recap, or at the end of the week as a weekly recap as well. So you'll just get some links that will take you back into the terminal. So that will be coming up in uh, later on uh, later on this year as well. <clears throat> so moving kind of away from the uh, away from the terminal itself, um, and to kind of to touch on actually kind of what specifically the, the kind of the product is of Kepler research and also touching on touching on why we're doing it, um, why we're doing it as well. So uh, what you see here is essentially kind of all of the, the key points that we want to kind of put across in terms of the advantages that we have um, within Kepler research. It's the fact that we have access to our new service, which is looking at kind of organic real time content. The fact that you have all of the content types, including, say, the short format updates and the webinars and the longer formats reports all produced in, in the same location. Everything that you uh, access via the terminal is produced in house as well. So this is from uh, within our own team of um, research analysts and then also with Camille on the news site will be uh, speaking to you shortly. It's the fact that we've got the embedded data in our system so you can seamlessly move from looking at the analytics into um, reading the research and back and forth basically about it. And I'll touch on some developments that we'll be having 
um, to the product kind of coming going forwards in terms of how that's just going to become even more seamless as well. So moving on though, um, and just to kind of show how we're developing Kepler in terms of uh, what we are able to what we're able to offer to our clients. Obviously, starting out with data. I mean, that's that's where this is the kind of the very first point that we that we come into the equation. Um, and by this, I mean essentially the kind of the raw data. I'm going to skip leap or leapfrog news for a second and come into the analytics bit, uh, the analytics piece. And this is with our essentially with our kind of our flows offering, where you're starting to be able to pull that data together to use it to gain some uh, elements of kind of insight as to what is happening um, at at this point in time. Then we released our news. And this is the kind of the descriptive element of what's happening in the market. And so the final and maybe a trigger to move into the analytics to say, oh, OK, right, this is happening in the market. What, how, what's, what does that mean in terms of the flows that I'm seeing? How do I aggregate all of that? And now we're coming in with the research offering. And this is where we're able to bring in the kind of the foresight or the predictive element of uh, of the puzzle. Now here we're using everything that we're pulling together from the data, from news, from analytics, from external information, from our own expertise, and able to say, um, this is what's happening in the market at the moment. This is how you can see it. This is why we think it's happening. And also this is what we think is going to happen next. So it's adding that next layer on top of everything that we're kind of already pulling together within Kepler as a company. I'm going to hand you over to Camille, who will uh, give you a, a recap of, of the news offering and kind of why we're, why we're pleased to be bringing that to, to the fore as well. My video does not seem to be working. Yep, got you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Alex. Um, I think my video is not working. No worries. Well. Hi everyone, my name is Camille Klass. Um, many of you are probably familiar with Kepler Research, but uh, Kepler News is new. And the reason we've launched the Kepler News service is really to provide a more complete product offering. With Kepler News, we're offering an incisive, real-time quick take on developments that are market moving or could move markets through data-driven insights and market intelligence. So, Data tells us what's happening. Research provides us with a deep dive on why things are happening. And news sits between the two, helping to contextualize and give meaning to Kepler's data and analytics by layering valuable insights from the market. So the news service provides quick updates in real time on developments that complement the in-depth analysis pieces from Kepler research. As Alex mentioned, news coverage for now is only on LNG. But I'd like to point out that all the content that we create is original. This means we do not purchase syndicated news or pick up and publish stories from other publications. Most news stories we publish will feature Kepler's proprietary data and data will often be a starting point for a new story. So the news we cover will be stories that matter to you and they would relate to such wide ranging themes as energy transition, pricing, new projects and project expansions, supply disruptions, tenders, among others. And of course, we look forward to any feedback from you. Um, back to you, Alex. Thanks. Thanks, Camille. Um, so if we move on into a bit more of the detail around what uh, the kind of the, our research offering is as well, um, I just wanted to highlight uh, here um, the, the breadth, both the, the depth and breadth of kind of knowledge and uh, expertise that we have within the research team. Um, we have people who are kind of specialist in the LNG industry, specialist in the freight sector. Um, we have experience from both upstream and downstream. And with the recent um, acquisition of Clipper, um, we've also brought in a couple of folks in the US to bolster uh, the bolster the team there. So we have both a kind of um, 
a geographical and a commodity spread and a kind of thematic spread uh, within the team. And this is developing as we speak as well. So we're, we're kind of actively adding to this team as we go forward. We'll look next at actually kind of what's in, what's included, what's entailed here. So we have um, two uh, packages um, to start off with. We are keeping it broad. Um, so rather than drilling down into say individual crude elements or clean product or dirty products, we're keeping it as liquids. So that's everything relating to crude oil and refined products in one package. Otherwise, we have LNG and thermal coal. Obviously, it's probably fairly clear, uh, given the last uh, market action in the last few months, why we've been grouping those. But actually, that's something that we thought was valuable to do um, from kind of in before the market started going absolutely crazy anyway. You'll see there that kind of the dark green uh, overarching element that is the macroeconomic pieces. So you may have seen uh, when I was looking at the reports on the page, we did a study about um, the implications of the Biden presidency at the time of the election and then a follow up when he uh, was actually inaugurated. And um, that kind of content will be sent out across the board because we feel that it's interesting whether you are an LNG trader or a crude oil analyst that content is, is relevant to you. And we're also including there uh, things um, around the, the dry bulks market, because again, whilst they're not directly connected to, um, to the kind of to the liquids or actually they are to the LNG space, but what's happening say in the iron ore markets and from a broader macroeconomic standpoint in China is something that has knock on implications for, for all of the energy space. So we see the value in including that there. Um, in terms of elements that we're going to be developing, you'll see um, LPG and PET cams, and then more specifically tanker and, and gas freight going forwards. So that's we're going, to, we're going to be addressing that in the new year. As it stands at the moment, anything relating to freight will be included uh, within the liquids or the LNG package. As I was saying earlier, we have a dedicated freight analyst. They are producing content, so that will be included there. And then LPG and PET cams. Um, we do produce um, a lot of kind of LPG and pet chem feedstock content at this point in time, and that will continue to be sent out to both, the, say, the liquids and the LNG um, LNG customers, or going forward to, for the time being anyway. So what's included in this? Well, it's a mixture of shorter format, weekly updates driven by what's happening in the market or what we're seeing within our data set. Or, or kind of some of the recurring themes that you have within the various commodity markets. So um, that's applicable for both crude and refined products, similarly on freight. So what we're looking at here is re relating to the, to the liquids package. Similarly on freight, a regular weekly update with um, whatever's kind of particularly relevant at that point in time, along with a monthly recap across the different tanker sectors. From a cross commodity point of view, um, there's access to the webinars. This is kind of one or two a quarter um, access to the analysts. I was saying we now publishing or now showing which analyst is producing this content. And so that's how they can uh, that's how we can access it. Um, and then also for certain clients, we're able to offer kind of dedicated client presentations on a regular basis. Um, we are working on how we uh, can leverage curated data as well. So if you're a research only client, you don't necessarily have access to the, the full data suite. Um, then you'll be able to uh, have a kind of curated data set of aggregated data via the research and news, uh, news offering. And then I was mentioning earlier the kind of the cross commodity type pieces, the macroeconomic geopolitical event pieces, they'll go to all clients as well. Um, on the LNG side, it's a very similar mix, kind of won't, won't go through it again. In terms of developments uh, that we have coming up, through the end of this year, as mentioning, we have we'll be adding the advanced filtering um, capabilities. A key thing to add here is also the market data updates. So where you are used to receiving um, updates, say from that that cover the weekly EIA forecast, and they're sent out in a regular email. Those will all be um, published on the same kind of um, schedules, but they will all be contained within um, the terminal 
as well. So you'll be able to kind of quickly see everything that there is around, um, so as I say, EIA weekly, so the fuel or floating storage in Singapore reports that we sent out. And then, as mentioned earlier, we're in, improving and continuing to improve on the notification systems by allowing that customization for the email alerts and so on. Going into next year, we're going to be working, as I was saying, on the kind of the seamless back and forth nature. So at the moment, um, you can only search for content, uh, research and use content within that element of the portal. However, going forwards, if you're looking at our flows analytic and you're saying, OK, tell me about Chinese crude imports from Saudi Arabia, you'll be able to see at the same time um, research content that has looked at the crude oil flows into China and how those have changed. Maybe it's related to the change in um, independent uh, refiner import quotas, that kind of thing. So you'll be seeing this kind of seamless connection between, again, the data and the research. And then we'll be developing that going down into 2022 further along and say the ability to extract the data from some of, say, the more complex analytics that we've built up where we've shown a chart within the uh, within a research piece, you'll be able to take that di data directly from the analytics. So the key thing to stress is that it's here for you to use now. And it's also not just available uh, as a desktop application. Um, you can access news and research via mobile apps as well, whether that's a tablet or also via a mobile phone. I was checking it uh, this morning. It works very nicely. You can see, read it as if you're kind of reading a, a standard news feed from the likes of Bloomberg, FT, et cetera. Um, and I think, uh, Clark, yep, you've replied to that question. Excellent. So um, the, yeah, the last thing really has to be said is to, you have access to the system, is to use it and please provide any feedback that you may have. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today.